Hello and welcome to the handover video for your auto sleeper Mizan. We'll go around the exterior of the vehicle to begin with and then when we get back round to the back door we will go into the interior. The first thing you find as you tour around the exterior of the vehicle is the gas locker. The LPG locker opens with a simple key and inside you'll find space for two small propane bottles. Now the vehicle is not fitted with a drive safe regulator so the bottles uh, have to be switched on and off um, at the beginning and at the end of the journey. So while driving, gas in the off position to close the gas valve. This brass uh, leave dial at the top is just turned fully clockwise. To open it, it's anti-clockwise and then you get to the end, turn it a little bit uh, back clockwise just so that it doesn't stick on the end stop. Continuing along the side of the vehicle you'll find the electric hookup point, the water fill point which again is operated with this key and you find the gas flue for the boiler. I'll show you the boiler when we go inside the vehicle. The gas flue cover must be used when in transit and when you're not using the boiler running on gas. So when you're on a campsite plugged into electric, you may as well use the electric you're paying for it and it's not metered. So don't waste your gas heating the water. Always use the electricity when on a campsite. The cover is just to stop any debris or insects getting into the boiler through the flue. Directly underneath the vehicle, you will find the drain point for the fresh water tank. So you fill here and it drains under here. This will be demonstrated to you on the day. It's an eye on impossible angle to reach with the camera, but I'll show it to you when you're collecting your vehicle on Saturday. In the passenger side of the cab is the bonnet release. A very simple layout underneath the bonnet, washer refill point here, steering fluid here, brake fluid here, and coolant reservoir there. Fill with oil here, oil dipstick point there, vehicle battery for jump starting there. Now the only thing you should have to check on a vehicle with this mileage between services is your washer bottle. Everything else will be done for you at the service interval. Continuing round the off side of the vehicle you'll find the fuel fill point and you use the Peugeot key to open this and that's where your diesel goes. Just along from there is the storage locker. Now in this storage locker you'll find electric hookup point and or lead and enough storage to keep a couple of other wet items, anything you wouldn't want to put inside the vehicle for fear of bringing damp into the vehicle. Immediately below that storage locker, you find the tap for draining your grey water tank and the travel and winter cover for the fridge vent. So the control panel now, and from left to right, you have the battery selection button and really you should always use L for leisure battery. In very rare occasions, perhaps select the vehicle battery for say igniting the cooker uh, so that you can start cooking if your leisure battery has gone flat. But by general rule of thumb, always stay on the leisure battery setting. Otherwise you could find yourself draining your vehicle battery and stranded in the middle of nowhere if you've selected the wrong battery. So always select leisure battery. After you've selected the leisure battery, the next thing you can do is switch on the supply to the lights. Now you'll notice the light here, it's not working while it's in the off position. When I put the master to on, the lights work. Now all the lights around the vehicle will now operate with their own individual switches. But again, they only work when the lights master switch 
is on. Switching the light master switch off, there's no power left to those lights. Next to that, you find the water fill. Now the water fill has two positions. It has uh, a downward position here and an upward position, similar to the vehicle and leisure battery selector. Now you always select the top tap button. That supplies power to the water pump. So when you turn the tap on, you get water. If the water pump is in the middle off position, you'll get some water, just a dribble of what's left in the pipe, but you'll get no water being pumped from your reservoir. And you can hear the pump runs on after you've switched it on to refill. The bottom position, this panel gets used in different vehicles. The bottom position is for a vehicle that would have another water input, a continuous water supply. If you were, for example, on a fully serviced site, this vehicle does not have it. So that position is redundant. Over here, we have a button to check the condition of your battery. We have a full charge on the battery. And over here, we have a button to measure how much water we have. And we've got just over half a tank of water, just enough for demonstrating and testing the vehicle to you. Just below the couch on the left hand side of the vehicle you find your RCD fuses. These are the fuses that protect the 240 volt circuits inside the vehicle and next to that the 12 volt fuses. These fuses are little blade fuses that are available from most um, car accessory shops, Halfords etc and they have different sizes from 5 through 10 and 25 or 15 in this case. It's always useful to carry some spares with you. Um, the manual that comes with the vehicle will tell you what fuse protects what item in the vehicle. Just beside that, you will find the gas control for the hot water. Now, it's got a simple outer ring, which you flick from side to side, down to the wee flame to indicate that you've selected gas and switched it on. And then you have a thermostat water temperature from 30 all the way up to 70. And that heats your water on gas. Before you switch this on, you have to take the gas cover off the flue in the outside. Otherwise the boiler will sense back pressure and safety cutout will come on and you won't get hot water. Now hot water runs on both gas and electric. To select electric, you do the following. Now just above the control for the gas for the hot water, when you lift the cushion on the couch, you'll find a panel that can just simply be moved aside. Inside here is the location of the actual boiler. You'll notice down at the bottom there's a little yellow lever. That drains the boiler. So when you're doing a full winter drain down, if you bring that to the up position, all the water will drain out of the boiler onto the ground below. And when you close it back into that position, the water will stay within the boiler. You'll notice there's a switch here with a red light on it. This is the electric heater for the boiler. Only works when you're plugged into mains electricity. And by flicking it on, red light comes on. You are now heating the water in your boiler. And that will heat the water in the boiler to about 60 degrees Celsius. If you want it hotter than 60 you can use the gas, which will heat it up to 70. You'll also notice this sergeant unit. This is a main charging unit for charging your leisure battery, and you should always have it switched on with the red light showing there. If you're putting the vehicle into storage over winter, you can switch that off, but in the main, keep it on all the time. The panel that covers the boiler has a handy little guide to those 12 volt fuses I was talking about, as well as appearing in the, can, the manual that you get when you receive the vehicle. While I have the cushion up, I'll also show you the indentations here and here, and also behind that storage compartment there. That is where these supports go when you're making the two single beds 
which you can just sleep on as two single beds by taking the back cushions off and placing them on the floor makes it into a double because you can then take the back cushions and place them across the supports up the middle forming a double bed. This is the control for your heater. Very simple to operate. That's the on button and the red light comes on to indicate that it's working and you then have a thermostat to control how hot you want the vehicle to get during the winter months. To switch it off, simply press that button and the light goes off and that's all there is to your heating system. If you want to in the summer, you can switch the fan on, on its own, without the heater and then that becomes an adjustment for fan speed and it will circulate air around the vehicle and then switch off. It's not air conditioning, but it will move air around the vehicle, which can help on a warm day. Right, let's have a look at the cooker. Very simply, simple to use. Have to make sure, obviously, that the gas is switched on. With the gas switched on, you press, turn to full, and press the ring in, or the button in, while you press the igniter. Hold it for a few seconds then the flame will stay on. And for the other side, exactly the same. Then press the igniter and hold for a few seconds, then the flame will stay on. The grill works in exactly the same way. Controls are here and the igniter button for the grill is there. Your new motorhome is equipped with a three-way fridge. Very simple to operate. It has three on-off switches. The first on-off switch is in the far right hand side and you'll notice down here there's a little battery symbol. This doesn't actually run off a battery, it runs off the alternator of the vehicle and it's the button you would select while driving to your destination. So when you're leaving home, going to the campsite, push in the red button and drive. You see there's no light has come on here but once you start the ignition on the vehicle a light will come on here to indicate that it's working and it will run off the alternator. It doesn't run off the vehicle battery, it doesn't run off the leisure battery, it runs off the alternator. The second switch along, and is now lit up, runs on mains electricity. The vehicle is plugged in at the moment, so that light's coming on and it's running on mains. This is the dial, little indicator there. We've got the fridge set at six, and when you come in to collect your vehicle, you'll find that it is cold. Down here, you see inside the fridge, a little glass viewing window. This is to check the pilot light when you're running the fridge on gas. Running a fridge on gas means that you can go off grid and not be plugged into a campsite because you'll get your leisure battery will supply the 12 volts for your lights and the gas will either heat your water, the diesel will heat the van and the gas will also run your fridge. So you're completely independent. To run on gas, you have a different thermostat. Scale goes from one to five, so we'll select four. To run on gas, you switch this switch on. You'll see it starts to flash, it's trying to light. Turn the gas on by pushing and turning and hold it in until the orange light stops flashing. Hold it for a few seconds after it stops flashing and release. If you release and it starts to flash again, just push this back in and hold it for another 5-10 seconds, then release again. It should not flash once it's ignited. Opening the fridge door and looking in the observation window, it's very difficult to see, but there is a little blue flame, which is the pilot lamp for the fridge, and you can see that working. No, I just can't get it on the camera. But trust me, on the day, you'll be able to see that operating. And that is your three-way fridge. Let's switch it off and go back onto mains electricity where I will leave the vehicle overnight so you have a fully charged battery in the morning when you come to collect and a cold fridge.